Europe's sovereign debt crisis is back. Spain's governing party gets trounced in local elections. Fitch, cut, Fitch cuts Greece's credit rating. And Standard & Poor's threatens to downgrade Italy. With us now from London to consider the situation is our newest contributor here at Bloomberg, Neil Ferguson, the Tisch Professor of History at Harvard and visiting professor at the London School of Economics, as well as best-selling author of books including The Ascent of Money. So, Neil, the worst electoral defeat for the Socialist Party in more than three decades in Spain, it seems a very, very harsh public repudiation of austerity measures. What does this tell you about the future of the euro and the European Monetary Union if the Spanish can't get behind budget cuts? Well, it confirms my view that the Eurozone has become a kind of uh, government-killing machine and that most governments are, uh, right now who have been incumbent over the years of the financial crisis uh, are being punished. And this, of course, applies not just to those on the periphery that are in trouble, uh, the notorious pigs, but in fact it's been happening in the core, Germany. Uh, and I think this is going to continue, and it's a really very troubling situation with uh, implications for the whole global economy. Uh, implications certainly for the whole global economy. Neil, how does it play out or how do you expect it to play out? If you look back at similar, I don't know that there are similar situations. There was never a European monetary union before. But consider history for a moment and try to guesstimate, if you will, what, how this is likely to play out. As you point out, Angela Merkel's governing party in Germany can't hold on to its lead in local elections. So if all of these governments are losing support across Europe, where does it go? Well, the, there was one precedent for this. Late, in the late 19th century, there was a Latin monetary union which died a slow death, mainly because of uh, Italian deficits. Uh, and this was always my expectation that it would be Italy that would drive the Eurozone off the cliff. Uh, in fact, I was a little wrong about that. And the problems began in Greece, in Ireland, in Portugal. Uh, now they threaten to uh, uh, spread to Spain. But, but now Italy is in the frame, so we can't talk about pigs anymore. We have to say pit eggs in order to make room for Italy alongside Ireland. You know, as the political situation deteriorates in nearly all of these countries in the Eurozone, I think we're going to see a political opportunists in the opposition parties saying, we have to do things differently. Uh, in the core, in the virtuous north, we're going to get more of those true fin type parties saying, enough with bailing out the people down south uh, and out west. Uh, and in the periphery, we're going to start hearing people saying, look, this is nuts. We're, we're inflicting masochistic austerity measures on ourselves. It's time to get out. And I think the idea of leaving the Eurozone, which is the most dangerous idea actually, is going to start surfacing as a politically credible one. So the outlook for the rest of this year is uh, more trouble if you happen to be in power and the temptation if you're in opposition to propose radical solutions, including conceivably exiting the Eurozone altogether. Neil, what you just described there sounds like a recipe for the collapse of the European Monetary Union. At this point, does it feel to you like it's beginning to be more of a foregone conclusion or something that still could be salvaged, possibly with the installation of someone like Christine Lagarde at the head of the IMF? Well, certainly it's pretty important that uh, we have a big hitting European in that uh, body because the IMF has played a key role in trying to stabilize the sovereign debt crisis right the way through. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily going to suffice. Remember, one of the problems we have right now is that a European, uh, Monsieur Jean-Claude Trichet, is in charge of the ECB, and he is making life very, very difficult for those people who would like to see some kind of restructuring, if not default, uh, on the part of the Greeks. Uh, and it's the opposition uh, and indeed tension within Europe that is making me more and more nervous. The Europeans themselves can't seem to get their act together to come to uh, terms with the reality that the Greeks can't possibly manage this vast debt that they've accumulated. And probably the Portuguese and Irish too will have to do something uh, in order to reduce their debt burdens over the short term. But if the ECB is against that, it doesn't really matter what the IMF does. We're heading towards a kind of Euro gridlock. Uh, and I think the stakes are much higher than many of the politicians who are so focused on domestic political issues seem to realize on a recent trip to uh, Spain, I met Mr. Zapatero. He seemed quite resigned uh, to electoral disaster this year. He's an outgoing uh, prime minister. He's not going to run re uh, for re-election. 
And when I was in Berlin a week ago, I was really struck by the atmosphere of, of complacency about this crisis. It does seem to me as if uh, the German government, which is the key player in all of this, isn't really prepared to write a big check uh, for Greece or anybody else. So I think the crisis is, is actually in many ways worse than many people realize, and the possibility of an orderly solution is getting lower and lower. How does it evolve? Does it continue to play out in slow motion, or at some point, does the train wreck accelerate and, and we really begin to see, as you put it, uh, some disorderly consequences, uh, you know, more immediate, let's say? Well, I think that's what tends to happen in financial crises. You have a slow burn. Uh, people see that the figures don't add up. They see that there's a problem. Uh, but there's a kind of collective denial about just how bad it could get. And then suddenly, expectations shift and there's a real exit uh, from the bond market. And I have a sense that this is coming soon. Uh, in the absence of any credible plan to stabilize the situation and in the absence of leadership from the IMF and with the ECB basically saying, we're not going to help you sort out this Greek mess uh, with a reprofiling, I don't see how much longer we've got before there is a major disorderly uh, uh, wind-up of the Greek situation and, the, and a contagion that could spread as far afield as Spain and Italy. Now, if you think in those terms, uh, this could become really very big indeed. And I've been saying for a while now that the danger exists that we Neil. have a 2008-sized event, this time in Europe.